Morning class, I'm Will Kemp from Will Kemp Art School and this week we're going to be painting this, a lovely little simple still life. All we're going to be using is three paints, titanium white, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. We're going to learn about warm and cool colours, how you can balance them out together. It's a really simple still life painting, anyone will be able to do it. We only use two brushes, two colours, three paints, how can you fail? So the first thing to do is just to prepare a coloured ground just to work on top of. This can just be a mix of the ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna and white just to get a neutral to paint it onto your canvas. You can also just use raw umber and white or burnt umber and white just to get a nice neutral tone that we can work on top of. Don't make it too thick, work quite thinly just so you cover the canvas but it's still opaque enough that you cover over the white paint from underneath. What we want is just quite a light tone that we can then work on top of, but no white paint. Get rid of that canvas so that we can work our colours on top of that. Just click the link below to download the image direct from my website to follow along at home. Morning class, so here's the jug just drawn out onto the toned ground. I've used as before a 3B pencil. This just gives you enough darkness so you can see where you're going, but it's not gonna to have too much graphite on there that will get mixed into the paint. A few points on the drawing just to be aware of when you're drawing it out, which can make a really big difference in the success of your painting. Because we've just got the light sources coming from this side, so this way the light's coming, it's hitting this side and this is all in shadow and this is what's called a cast shadow. It's very important to get this cast shadow drawn in so when we paint it in it will give that illusion that this object is sat in light. Especially if you're working with warm and cool colours and you're trying to get that feeling of light working in your paintings it can be so key just to get those shadows into your work. Also notice how I've got this very sharp line here where we've got the shadow area that's inside the jug. This is again going to be so key just to really give that feeling that we've got a light coming from this side and it will just make it feel very realistic. Also if you notice how I've laid out the jug, I've put it so I've got a line here on the background which goes through this area here on the handle which is called a negative space. That is a space between an object. So if you're setting up your cup or your jug, twist it around until you find the shape within here looks really nice. And also how I've arranged it so that I've got um, a line cutting through it so that I've instantly used a technique called overlap, as in I've overlapped the jug with the background. And this line is really going to help to bring that jug forward as the painting progresses. I've also got this area here of shadow that I'm going to keep dark. There's a little bit of shadow down at the bottom, I'm not overly worried about that. It's more making sure that we've got this area dark enough so that the jug really comes forward. So I'm just going to lay out the colours that we're going to use for this painting and it's just going to be two colours, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. This is just titanium white. It won't usually fall down this much, it's just because I'm working on the vertical. So these two colours are a really great limited palette to start with when you're looking at learning classical painting techniques. Because you've got the dark blue of the ultramarine and its complementary colour is orange, a complementary colour is just something that is opposite it on the colour wheel. So if we have a look at these both together, you'll see that the blue is here and orange is over here. Now Burnt Sienna isn't a very bright orange, but it's within that orange family. So we've got two opposites here, so we'll be able to create a dark colour between the two. They'll tone each other out, so we'll be able to create some really lovely greys with this. Oh, put that back. But the other thing we'll be able to experiment with is using warm colours and cool colours because of the burnt sienna being a warm tone and the ultramarine blue being blue, which is a cool colour. 
So before we start, I'm just going to mix a couple of tones with these two. start to see we've created is a very dark brown almost black color from these two this is going to be great for some of these dark areas on the jug and that's what we're just going to put in to start with so what I'll do with the brush I'm just using a number 10 round brush this is from Raphael but it is anything that's just got quite a soft bristle to it you don't want it to be too stiff because some of the detailed areas on here, we're just gonna kind of wash in quite gently. So I've just got some water, it's very clean water, it's just a very dirty pot, so don't be uh, um, alarmed by that. So just dip in your brush to the water to start with, and then with some kitchen roll, I take off most of the water, and you see what happens, it just helps to give the shape back to the brush. And this just means I can now work this so I can just get a nice thin consistency that's thin yet opaque. It's a really fine line between going too thin or too opaque with your paintings. It takes a bit of experimentation and really don't underestimate how much of a difference it can make from being too thin or too thick it can make a massive difference in the success of your painting. So I'm starting and I'm looking at the whole image and I'm looking for the darkest area, the real darkest part. So for here, this area of the, the jug handle is very dark. So I'm using the round on the areas where I want more detail, where I want to make sure like that I get the, the spout, that, that shape there is so important to make sure you get that in accurately. So with a round brush, you can always get more detailed than you can with say a flat brush or a filbert brush. If there's any areas that go on, especially if you're using student quality paints and they're not thick enough, you can start to see a lot of the a tone coming through from underneath, you can just start to work a bit on top of it. Acrylics dry so quickly, you'll be able to work on top absolutely fine. Be careful when you're working on the bottom of the jug that you don't flatten it out. A tendency when you're painting a jug is because you know in reality it's got a flat bottom is that you try and paint it very flat but you've got to make sure you get this curve on it it will make such a difference in giving that realism to the jug now on the photo that I've got there's um, a line which is a crack in the wood that the jug's sitting on you can by all means put that in, but I'm thinking for this painting, I'm going to keep it a bit more simple than that. So I'm not going to bother about putting this detail in. I'm just going to concentrate on the jug and bringing that all together in the painting. I've just added a bit more water. You can notice the difference, how it's got a bit more flow onto it. So I'm going to brush it more onto this darker part of the painting. In fact, I think I'm just going to use a bigger brush just to show you how kind of quickly you can block it in. So this is just with a filbert brush. It's not that much bigger in terms of the size and the round, but because it's a, a little bit stiffer on the actual brush, you can kind of really scrub it in a bit more. The 
There's a little bit of reflected light on this side of the jug, so I'm just going to wash that in with water, just so it keeps it quite dark, just so I'm aware that it's there. But what you don't want to do is try and overemphasize that too soon in the painting. Now we've got this real dark scene, I'm just going to put in some of the lights into this area of the spout so we've got a tonal range, the darkest areas and the lightest areas. The one light area we're not going to put in now is the highlights, like the highlights on the edge of the handle or a little bit of reflected light here on the edge of the jug because what they often look like the best things to paint as in the most fun things to paint and they're often the easiest things to put in just at the end. If you build up your shapes first and so it looks like the highlight is sitting on top of them, it'll be so much more effective in your painting. I'm just going to grab some of the white and add a bit of this colour that we've already mixed. Okay, I'm just dipping it in the water just to increase a bit of flow. Now because the light that's coming is cool, so we've got a cool light hitting it, I'm just going to add a touch of the blue to it. Okay, that's quite nice. and a bit more of the white paint just to go around that rim. Probably go over this again later, so don't worry about it too much. Okay, great. Click to subscribe above so you don't miss out on the next lesson. This is Will Kemp from Will Kemp Art School.